do. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, when you get tired of grabbing the brisket, just tune in to the Grabbing the Brisket podcast show. 100%. Can, listen, I, can we go back to the just our intro music? Such like people that can create this type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, don't do it. (laughs) But people that can create this kind of like we we so obviously we we had this created for us on Fiverr. And uh, if you're looking for stuff to be done, go to Fiverr. Like there's plenty of artists, plenty of people that are doing badass shit, and it's it's kind of inexpensive, right? Because they're getting paid per job and whatever, right? The very remember the very first cut we got of this. <laughs> uh, we have to have that somewhere. It's so we, damn funny. We need to play the very still first have. cut we, we got. Somewhere, right? Sound like it some like '90s like sitcom. Sitcom, like, yes. like little oh, what house, Full House. You Something. have that right? If you have that, we need to find it. I want to. We should play that for a 200th episode intro. Yeah. Such, <laughs> such a difference between this and that, and and every time I, their song plays, it gets better and better. it's just a good intro. It's you good. know what I mean? They did a yeah. good job. He I don't did, know who the hell it was. He did a great job. Oh wow! Yeah, Mark read it to him. Yeah, I guess. There it is. Whoever it was. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, tuning in to the Grabbing the Brisket podcast. I know there's like 500 murder mystery podcasts out there that's just <laughs> right. ruling the world. All who done Everybody just Ooh. wants to learn about I wonder people who getting murdered it. or how to get away with murder. Yeah. Uh, and you found mm-hmm. Grabbing the Brisket. So, hey, thank you. We appreciate it so much. Let's uh, dive right into it. So, t- today we're, we're, it's all about the competition ribs. Mm-hmm. Comp ribs. So really, la- yeah. last couple of weeks, we did a lot of just that very extensive. A lot of weeks. Uh, weeks of just brisket. Did we get into meat selection? We did in the very I just beginning. Don't remember yeah. it? I just, I just feel like I. Just it was one of those like three months ago. It was yeah. one of those episodes. God, and we actually had Ben talk about this. Ben called us. Mm-hmm. Ben, I'm gonna give you a big shout out right here. With uh, yes. you remember his what's his tag or his handle for. Uh, Ben there done that dot T X. Yeah. But the Ben is B E N, not B E E. Yeah, no, we get that. Ben there done that. Yeah. Uh check out Ben, because Ben is doing some crazy stuff. He's laser engraving, whatever else. He reached out uh, on our last <laughs> live and hey, when he says he's a talker, he's a talker, but man, welcome awesome to the show. Guy. Super love, awesome. Love, I mean I love the energy. Great, yeah. great, great. Like some of the stuff he showed us, <laughs> holy crap, this guy is on fire. Man. Yeah, we talked to him for about 40 minutes. You know what he said? He said, I, wa- I watched the last episode. Who was the drunk guy? Yeah, I said, <laughs> that was me. And he goes, I wish y'all had talked more about brisket. And I go, well, actually, we've been on this brisket kit for like nine years and we're winding it down. So right. you caught the tail end of a wine. He goes, oh, okay, okay. So you had to go back and listen to. A few more episodes, I don't, and I don't think I don't not I'm not really sure how many we've done. Like, was it five, five There's brisket? Probably five or six. Yeah. yeah. So six weeks of brisket, dude. That's a lot of time. Like, we got to get it, off of brisket we, for a little bit. And, and we are. We didn't yeah, talk today, about brisket. We're, mac and we're jump, No, no, we're, we're we're jumping into the 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 pork rib game more is. specifically into the competition side of pork ribs. Yeah. And uh, I, I know there's a lot to get into and a lot to unwrap on this whole thing. Obviously, we can't. <laughs> obviously, we can't. <laughs> get everything into one episode and keep it entertaining and fun because I mean, we can sit here and talk barbecue ribs, competition ribs for the next three hours. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of people just kind of tune the fuck out and they'll be like, I'm done. Just send yeah. me the, send me the uh, cliff notes. Yeah. Or, First 30 right. seconds. Just dumb this down. some like, yeah, give me some bullet points. Like, right. Give me step by step. That's all I want. Right. Is that, they is just that, want the tips. Do you think that's I want the pro tips. Just, yeah. uh, just the tip, Bob. Just a tip, Bob. Just <laughs> I was tip. waiting for that. Uh, yeah, so so we have a lot. So, but here, I'll, I'll, before we talk about what we're talking about today, obviously we're doing the mm-hmm. the competition ribs. Today is all but, about rib selection. Rib selection. But Keep do, that in mind. But do you want to give a uh, kind of synopsis of where we're going with with our entire show? Right. So today we're going to get into our top ten game day snacks for Super Bowl, which Super Bowl is coming up. Well, it's just. It's coming up for us. When they listen to this, it has just passed. So, uh, so we shouldn't talk about that. Yeah, I think we ixnade that one uh, when okay. you're messing with the phone. So horrible idea. <laughs> yep. Uh, and we're moving on. We have. Uh, we, we you know what? We still have the top ten snacks. We're still going to pop them out there. Correct. We'll, 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 we'll give you a high level what we're thinking about. Whatever else. We have the world's quietest room. Next, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not elaborating. I'm not going into this. Whatever else. We have the dark origins of Valentine's Day. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to go into the barbecue beer review, the barbecue news, and, of course, the uh, rib selection, competition rib selection, which, by the way, is important. If you're in the competition game and you're trying to, you're trying to win, you're trying to compete, 
uh, you better know how to pick out your freaking ribs. You need to figure out what, what you're looking start. at. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And we're going to uh, wrap this thing up with some barbecue fails, which if you're not watching this on YouTube, we have some pretty good videos on the, uh, the barbecue fails. So. That's right. If you have to listen to it just on Spotify or whatever, do that. Later on, go back, check it out on YouTube, and watch the videos because you will laugh your ass off. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> better be a barbecue fail tonight if we don't right. watch this pit out here. I'm, I'm actually cooking uh, – uh, well, I'm saying not me. It's James and I because it's, it's always a team effort here. Uh, but I think we're cooking uh, – I know we're cooking. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what you think. Brisket. <laughs> and, and then we got two, uh, we got two pork bellies. Two on pork right bellies now. on the nice. Oklahoma Joe. That's right. What, what, made you guys, what made you want to do uh, pork nice. bellies? Because usually I don't think you guys cook pork bellies too pork much. Pork belly burn ins. Just wanted to do it. Yeah. Try it out. Pork belly. No, I, I've got a thing tomorrow, and uh, so I was like, I basically I'm bringing in some some food, and I'm, I'm going to wow everybody, and I'm going to entertain with some customers and uh, hmm. and, and future customers, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fucking be awesome. You're gonna so, put some of that uh, that burnt end sauce. Do we have any of that? You know, I can't remember. Yeah, the, it's from uh, Hardcore Carnivore. Hardcore yes, Carnivore. thank you. Yeah. That stuff's pretty good. I don't know if we have it's any. It's really good. If we have yeah. some, oh, yeah. we'll get some. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the whole Jan say he just, he's going to get them hooked. He's like, they're, they're going right. to taste that barbecue. They already just like, now, see, now, now I contributed. So if you add that, I can be like, yeah, I helped make that. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So <laughs> before we get into the, uh, the world's quietest room, um, John, as I do a little shuffling and research, do you want to queue up? Perry Brooks. Uh, yes. I know we had a phone call from one of our uh, uh, buddies, Perry. top listeners. What did Perry Just, want? It? What yeah. did he say? I don't know if you guys recall last week we did the Tarnation review. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't remember if it was James or Jan. One of y'all called Perry Brooks out saying that because you had what? You said you had five beers and then three Tarnations and you challenged him basically. Yeah. Saying mm -hmm. he wouldn't hang or whatever. Betty couldn't do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyways, he called in. <laughs> okay. Yo, boys. You know who it is. Um, yeah. That's, uh, I'll take that challenge. <laughs> Let's go. Five beers. I'll let you pick the beers. Miller Lite, Pure's Lite, um, uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dos Equis, Corona. We'll do five beers and three Tarnations. Boys, mm. I'm Irish and a professional drunk. So, um, yeah. Let's get it on. Hey, Date and time, baby. I'm there. Come game on. on. Hey, I was about to say, it sounds like he might have got started on that a little early. He already did it. Yeah. Look, Perry, <laughs> look, send us your address because I'm, I'm going to send you a six-pack of this Tarnation. And let me tell you, the magic number that I had was three. Three Tarnations. But that was after about five or six beers, right? Uh, That's the whole challenge right here. Yeah, there he it thinks is. he can do it. You think you can do this? And, and listen, I... I literally went out at that point. I, I, that was my going out moment. I had no business going out. I should have been going home. You know what I mean? So, I think it's more than 6%, yeah. to be honest with you. Dude. Well, I mean, didn't, it, didn't that beer... That it's like 9%. It was 9? Oh, was nine? Okay, yeah. I was about to say. Yeah. yeah. You look at your drinks upside down. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> After yeah. one of those. Yeah. All right. Three, He's holding the bottle up down. Three, like, nine six percent <laughs> Pouring out on his leg. Six pack. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look. I love that. I, you know what? I love Perry just calling in all the time. Can, can we run this number out real quick? What what is this phone number? If you oh, want to call okay. in, put his phone number. Oh, well, our phone number. I thought you, you meant Perry. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, Perry. blast him. If you, you want to call in and you want there? to be on the thing, it's uh, I got this. It's uh, hotline is four three four eight two nine two two nine nine. Can you please call in and get on this freaking show? Right. All right. And Do John, your best. John, uh, he has a caller right now. John, cue up the caller. Let's go, John. Come again? <laughs> okay. It didn't work that way. Yeah. One of these days it will. Very easy, guys. Just leave a message. Yeah. No, I, I, Perry's awesome. Uh, I think we've had uh, conversations about him dropping in studio and doing just an in-person just interview. Yeah. I know he, I, he does catering. He does. Um, he works his ass off. So yeah. what he does. Competition barbecue. Uh, yep. Working his butt off. I mean, he kills it. Uh, so we're going to get him on eventually uh, just to shoot this shit and drinks a lot of beers. And a lot of beers. All that good stuff. Yeah. We need to play like a Saturday night or something. Yeah. And just like rage. It's like be all an, day. an in-person interview for sure. We'll do cooking all day. We'll do some crazy stuff. I feel like it would just be a shitty podcast. And no, it's we not, have to record it's not first. We'll go, yeah, yeah, right. we'll go get a baby goat. We'll, right. like, we'll, we'll slaughter that damn thing in the backyard. Right. We'll because we'll be we'll so drunk it. and just like. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, we got to record it and then start drinking. Yeah, right. I'm not doing the goat yeah. thing. I'm just Game kidding. Game plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Perry. Yeah. Okay, so I saw 
earlier yesterday, uh, I was thumbing through trying to come up with some articles before we dived into the whole Delt. barbecue. Is it delve? Dove did. Last delved. week you said delve. Yeah. I, I didn't want to repeat the same word again. Well, I just want to do that. make sure you knew Jesus. what was up. Right? You delved it. You delved There's it. like anyway. you 20 listeners it. just turned it off right there. Yeah. So this moron can't even spell delve. Right. So I learned about the quietest room yeah. in the world. I've heard of this. This, thing, is, yeah. this is housed in Microsoft's headquarters. So I don't know what Bill Gates. I don't. I don't know uh-huh. what these guys over there are doing over there with trying to create the quietest room. Right. And I mentioned something a little bit earlier to my wife talking about the story. And some of these stories I bring up to Emma and and, and Laura, my wife. Uh, I was like, this this one room is like negative twenty decimals. And Laura's like, well, how does it go negative? Huh. It's like. Because everything has a sound. It's zero. So what up when you get two twenty decimals, you still hear nothing. Is that how that works? Yeah, I, yeah that's I, gotta be it. That's right? what she is like. Okay, so you have ten decimals. Okay, you get down to zero. That should be nothing, right? This room is negative twenty. Yeah, I don't it's even like know sucking it. sound Cause, out cause of the room. That's what I mean, like so, so soft, like yeah, your voice. Like, Go to say something. It doesn't carry. Like yeah. you're, you're literally, you feel like you're talking in a small little room, about this big. Right, that's why it's negative because it takes it takes so much to get to zero, just just to be able to and and takes so much to get to one one decimal. Okay, right, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's mm. so quiet. So they they say that only a handful of people can stay in this room for a minute max. Oh, I can do it. <laughs> why? No, what I happens? I go to sleep in there, bro. Okay, so w- within the first couple of seconds in this room, <laughs> Your ears start bleeding. No, no, not yet. Uh, <laughs> Not yet. A nosebleed. You're like, ugh. I feel funny. It's happening. Like, like convulsions. Like a, what's that movie? Scanners or whatever. He's like, yeah. nose starts bleeding. He's like, ugh. Um, right. So within Dude. 20, 30 seconds or 20 Scanners. seconds or whatever, um, you can hear your heartbeat just like boom, mm. boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Maybe another 10, 15 seconds after that, you can hear the bones grinding in your oh. body as you move. What? Yeah. And then probably another 20 seconds after that, you can hear the blood flow through your body. Oh, I want to go in this place so bad. Dude. That sounds awesome. Nah, I don't believe that. And then once you reach like a minute, you, you like start getting this like high-pitched like screaming in your ears mm-hmm. to the point where people are like, ah, I can't do anymore. I'm done. I want to try wow. it. Sounds like an so anechoic bad. chamber or something, Dude. right? Lock mm. me in there for 24 hours. Did you read that? I'll come out. <laughs> Claw your eyes out. Yeah. I'll come out. I'll look like a different human. I look like I'm a superhuman. What happened to him? Oh, yeah. Hair falls out. Yeah. Yeah. Hair no is gone. Ears. <laughs> right? ears shattered. Right. Just fingernails pulled out. Like just anything to get a noise. Right. <laughs> I'm like I'm done. I'm in pain. Like yeah. Hey, whatever. I don't. Uh, so when I first read this, I thought it said the alcoholic chamber, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh shit, the alcoholic I'll chamber!" Go there. The quietest room in the world. Like, uh, I guess how is that a cure or something? Like, I just, I just, it's like sitting there. I was like, glanced. I was like, "Oh, uh, okay." Yeah. Jan goes in there like fifteen <laughs> beers deep. He's like three uh, tarnations deep, and he's just like. Yeah. Man, this is quite soothing in here. Yeah. Hey, Nobody's ever made it this far. Right. Hey, can you put the AC down a little bit? Uh, I think I'm going to take a nap. Let's get a pillow. Yeah. I can uh, hear my blood. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. But I, I've heard this. So I've heard about this room, and I've heard that, that it actually does drive people crazy. Mm-hmm. And that's the deal. It's like, like you can go longer. You're just going to be crazy. You know, It's just going to make you feel like you're just – you're going insane, right? Yeah, so, it's like I, you lose your 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 senses, like that 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 very perception quick. really yeah. quick. And it's like we uh, took a you know, those cave tours where you go down deep into the earth, mm-hmm. yeah. the Carlsbad caverns, and all this stuff, whatever. Mm. So you, get, you get all the way down so far to where they're like, okay, everybody turn their lights off, and uh, it's like so pitch black when everybody does it, and they're like, you you can only go so long looking at pitch black before you're you're blind you go blind Mm. you should go blind that's what happens yeah Yeah. so it's so dark down there when they turn the lights out like put your hand in front of your face and they turn the lights out can you see your hand bro i was like this i was like i can't see nothing right i'm i'm looking for my my fingertip or something and they were like after about a week you start to go blind yeah 
Like it oh, so takes a while. If you well, if you spend like, it's every day. Every day you're losing eyesight because yeah. you, you have, nothing, you you have, have to nothing, keep your eyes shut. You have nothing to focus. What on. the fuck's the difference if it's open or shut? Well, well because you're you have nothing to focus on. So yes, your, your eyes, eyes like, in and out, trying, in and out, trying, trying, trying to, to focus. Oh, it's, it's trying to see and it can't see anything, and you literally just go blind. Huh? I've never had that happen. But, but your hearing goes really well. I mean, that's <laughs> just mm-hmm. don't go into the deepest dark there part of a cave for a week, right? And you'll yeah. be okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, they lost that Come kid. <laughs> so we went, the one we went in, uh, they had so and so's. What was it called? Uh, Christian's corner, not Christian. Something uh, crown or throne. It's the thrones, what they called it. But they had a small kid that went missing for three days, like on a trip. Yeah, kid goes in there, and the whole family goes up, but all the lights go down at the, at the, when everybody left. Right, this kid sat on this rock for like three days, and they came back down and found him. And he was in some part of some special place of this cavern that that we'd walked down. And then where, where, where they found him was, so they now they call it. So some, something throne, his throne, whatever his name. I can't remember his name. Johnny, Joey, Jimmy, Christian. I don't know, man. Like, whatever. But like three days, man. Think about that. How, how that that dude never yeah, hungry. He Shit. never became like he just be, never became the same after that. You know what I mean? Like this kid was probably scared of the dark. After that, he's like, no, it's okay. I just just like the dark. Hey, yeah, you want to go outside and play? No, I'm just. I'm gonna sit in my closet. You know what I mean? Like I feel like he just ruined his life. I mean, right. ho- hopefully it didn't. Hopefully he's out playing basketball and doing his thing or whatever as a full life. But I just feel like that. Did he go blind? I think it like, was only three days. I, oh, I feel yeah. like three days were. Uh, and there, there may have been some lights in there that he was able to focus on or whatever at the yeah, time. Yeah, adjust his glasses. But how did they not notice he was missing for three days? The family did, but he had wondered. Yeah. He wasn't in the so same they were spot. Searching for him for three yeah. days. Yeah, but oh, okay. So part of those caverns, you can fly two hot air balloons in one cavern. Think oh, about shit. that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's how big it is. So it's, it's like, like a never touch situation never, where yeah. they just left him. Yes. Yeah, right. right. Dude's got like a wig on. <laughs> like, it's my wig. Yeah, oh the, no, where's Johnny? Right. Oh. The only other way that I or, or other way that I've heard of somebody going blind yeah. that quick masturbation. Is masturbation. <laughs> is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. You are dumb as shit. I was like really <laughs> listening in, like, oh, I want to hear about this. Yeah. But I'm bum. <laughs> but I'm bum. Uh, All right. Well, I'm sorry quickly, I killed your thunder. Yeah, let's day. hear the other nonsense she you brought us. Quickly slide on to the, the other nonsense since school news the, the that I brought. Dark so, origins of Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day Valentine's Day is approaching really quickly and a lot of people are out there probably scrambling, just like, fuck, what am I gonna do? I gotta get the uh the yeah. the candies, I gotta get the flowers, Dude, I gotta get everything. This thing's but made up by Hallmark. Do you know the origins of Valentine's Day? Do you, do you know what you're celebrating? Saint Valentine. Saint Valentine. Mm-hmm. But do you know how that came about? All I know is if, if it's after a saint, it's usually a sad story. There's something yeah, bad that happens. Somebody died. Yeah. Somebody always yeah. dies. Yeah. No, I just yeah. uh, let me just go ahead and just like Quentin Tarantino this stuff. It's like, yeah, there's two people that got killed. They were named Valentine, and they both died on February 14th, like years apart. And I'm not sure who murdered them or killed them or whatever. But the Catholic Church came in like, oh, okay, hey, Saints Valentine's Day, we're gonna. We're going to pick you up, guys. Uh, R.I.P. We're sorry. And that, that sounds very just kind of just like I'm glossing over that, but um, I, I'm sorry. But when I uh, read this story here. Can it, you read the first line for me? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> when, when I read this. so Let's get there first. From, from February 13th to the 15th, the Romans celebrated the Feast of Lupercalia? Lupus, Lupus, Lupercalia. Yeah. Uh, the men sacrificed goats and dogs and then whipped the women with the hides of the animal that they have just slain. So all been there, right? <laughs> yeah. Let me just let that soak in. So the the <laughs> Roman romantics were obviously drunk and naked the whole time, mm-hmm. and they would take these hides of goats and dogs, and the women would just line up. Yeah, but yeah, but it says the Roman romantics were drunk. They were naked, mm-hmm. right? They're just standing there in all their glory, right? right? Yeah. And they're like, line up, girls. They all lined up. Yep. Because they thought that this was some type of like a f- fertile type deal. Fertility. 
fertility where they'd line up and these guys would just beat them with these hides and they would be fertile. Let's get smacked, right? Get a little right. butt, little butt pop. And little. then they would, uh, they would link up. They would like, yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> you're going to, you're, you're with me for the rest of this, uh, festival. And they're like, great. And then sometimes it would last. Sometimes they're like, Hey, I will never call you again. <laughs> Right. Like, right. I whipped her with the goat first. Right. Is it like a hey. towel snap type of deal? Yeah. Or? <laughs> Look, oh, last night was cool and all, but I'm just not feeling it. Right. <laughs> Nothing says love like being beat with a dead dog. Right. Try your luck next year. <laughs> I mean, like, what? They're just trying to get pregnant. They're just trying to get like, hey, I just want to get fertile. I just want to be able to make my, no, strip down, let's beat you with some carcass. Right. And... Why? A goat and a dog. He says, "Why a goat and a dog?" I have no clue, but they had their their rhymes and reasons. But it, <laughs> the whole you go back into history, just like they just had weird stuff that they did. Like, oh no, I gotta I gotta step on this crack. Uh, if I don't step on this crack, then just everybody dies. Right. Uh, so I do this every day, and then I pass that on to my kid. You have to step on this crack every day, or everybody dies. So it's like that. How many thousand like years OCD prior to that, just like OCD was. somebody skinned a dog and a goat and like whip it, and then then like whip two it, months later, this good. this lady's like, "Oh, I'm pregnant." And they're like, "That's how it works." <laughs> hey, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, next year I'll be whipping you, right? You're like, "Whoa, time out, time out, Tim." Uh, it says ancient Romans may also be responsible for the name of the modern day of love, Emperor Claudius II executed two men both named valentine on february 14th in two different spans right two different two different time frames um and there's a word i can't really i don't know marty i don't know martyrdom martyrdom martyrdom. Uh, martyrdom. Uh, i see it now yeah it was honored by martyrdom the, uh catholic church uh with the celebration of saint valentine's day and i just don't i feel like i feel like that's I just never knew St. Valentine's Day was a uh, Catholic holiday. Right. Yeah. This, I thought he said cathartic. Oh, yeah. cathartic. No, it's, it's a Catholic holiday. Catholic. Yeah. Catholic. Yeah. Catholic. Yeah. Not cathartic. Got a nice little dis- <laughs> uh, depiction here of uh, the uh, murder. That, <laughs> the word is Catholic. Catholic. So. <laughs> but hey, Catholic. this is... <laughs> Catholic. Catholic. Uh. So fuck yourself. But hey, this is the Grabbing the Brisket barbecue <laughs> podcast and maybe we should just slide does, into a little Fuck bit of the barbecue brain, news okay. yes yeah. hot off the grill barbecue news brought to you by mbbqa barbecue news magazine it is catholic church <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, dude i'm trying to read all these fucking words or i'm like okay looper i mean like i'm like looking here <laughs> like like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like claudius no. i mean Jeez, Martum. Like, can I? Can hey, we words just... are hard, buddy. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, let me, let me shit together here. Your... Okay, I got. Go. Uh, I got a, a couple of few things here. Uh, Big Mo Kason and Bob Trudnak, two friends of the show. Yeah. Uh, two of the most renowned names in barbecue yep. uh, are teaming up for a new barbecue joint in Huntsville, Texas, called <laughs> the Kindred Pig Barbecue. Uh, sure to be a hit. Two pitmasters have obviously decades of experience. Uh, we don't have a date yet on when that's opening or whatever, but we will keep you posted. We will be there. <laughs> yeah, we want to definitely go check that place out. Uh, I think that's cool. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think that's cool. <laughs> I was I was hoping somebody was going to jump in with something to say about it, Look, but I'll, I, I'll just so, go on to the next so one, Bob, I guess. <laughs> Bob is the pizza, right? He he yeah. is the pizza guy. He has, he has the, the sauces and whatever else, right? smoke guru, the, all that, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and you have Mo, which has basically just been slaying it for, for years, right? I right. mean, it's just... Barbecue royalty, basically, right? I, every, every, both of those guys have been on television, have been on the Barbecue Network and or what is it, Food Network and whatever. Right. Uh, the fact they're going to Huntsville, that that part is a little bit intriguing to me. And I'm like, I know they're trying to get out of their comfort zone and get into an area, but like Huntsville, what, who picked Huntsville? And I'm like, I mean, I see it, and, and Huntsville's a big town and, and whatever else, right. but I'm like, I I'm love curious. it that it's close enough. For us to drive to, yeah, I'm gonna try um, to set something up for sure. I'm curious, of, like, it's There's not a gonna be nearby, yeah, yeah, so oh, but nice. the state prison, but I, I don't think it's gonna be like I'm wondering if you're gonna do like a standard, their, their standard barbecue, or are they gonna be elevating? Is it gonna be something? Different? Oh, I'm sure they'll be, you know what I mean, doing something. And I cannot wait pizza. to see because <laughs> these guys are mad gen- geniuses, they're gonna come up with something, oh, yeah. and I, yeah, I just feel it, you know, Love it. 100%. Uh, the next one I got here, uh, award winning pitmaster, yes, Catholic. Warming pitmaster, barbecue judge, owner of Cool Smoke Barbecue, Tuffy Stone, 
uh, has released two new barbecue rubs, uh, the Big Umami, Ooh. and the other one is called uh, Daily Grind Coffee Rub. Let's see, I have a little clip here somewhere. Mm-hmm. Just click I don't know where room. the fuck it went. Oh, there it is. It's not a clip. It's just a picture, so you can see it. But uh, I couldn't find much about it anywhere except for he posted something on Facebook about it. So I didn't even see it on his website yet, but I'm guessing it's going to be there pretty soon. And he did say on his uh, little Facebook post that there's a third one coming, but he seemed pretty excited about it. Uh, and I didn't get any flavor profiles other than obviously one of them's a coffee rub and the other one's umami. It says one's an all-purpose, right? Yeah, one's all-purpose. Umami's the other one's all-purpose uh, rub. The other one's a beef and pork. I want that umami. Um, that's what I have. That's what I have in my notes. What is it? Made in the USA. Um, it'd be better if you said made in Texas. Sorry, Tuffy. Uh <laughs> Uh, well, but, he's from Virginia or something, isn't he? But, yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't know. But, Are we the only state that does that? Uh, Made in Texas? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Are we? 100%. Yeah. But I like how it, the, the logo, the packaging, everything looks phenomenal. Those rubs look great. Uh, but I like it. it's the Professor Tuffy Stone. And he mm-hmm. is the Professor. <laughs> oh, he is, sure. He is, he is scientific. He is very down to like how much he does, how long he does. Like He has this thing down to a pat. It's the reason why he is like a world champion. Oh, for sure. And everything else. I can just tell by looking at that picture that I'm gonna like those right. rubs. So yeah. just looking at that yeah. four time grand champion at Jack uh yeah. the Jack Daniels and the yeah. Memphis. He's got he's got all of them. He's been grand champion on almost every one you can think of. Right. He's one of them all. Yeah. The, the only yeah. thing that I'm kinda of disappointed with is having the pig behind him. It, yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking that it should be a goat because <laughs> Because he, he is the goat. goat. He is one oh, of the goats. I like what you did there. Oh, okay. nice. That's pretty good. Tuffy, take pretty notes, good. brother. Take notes. Uh, okay, and then the last thing I have here, uh, and I'm pretty damn excited about this one, is uh, Academy is now going to be carrying Lane's rubs and sauces. Ooh. I don't know if you guys already heard this or not. No. Yeah. So, uh, and I just have a little clip because it kind of showed on their website what, what some of the stuff was that they're going to be carrying. But I'll read them for you for your, the folks that are not watching. Uh, looks like they're going to have his uh, buffalo sauce, the one legged chicken, sort of white sauce, kind of sweet sauce, the Qunami rub, the blackening rub, the brisket rub, mm. and Spellbound, which is one of his, I think, well, I say newer, but it's been around for a little while now. Yeah. No Cubano? So, Do you say Cubano? Uh, no, I didn't see okay. that one. Although, when he, I watched his video, he mentioned one or two other ones that I did not see on the website, so maybe some stores will have okay. different stuff than others. I'm not really sure. But I'm excited about the Sword of White, and I'm really excited about the Brisket Rib. So, you tell you who's really excited really about good. the Sword of White? Who? Leslie. Oh, <laughs> she loves that shit. Leslie's like, are you serious? I don't Buy have by the to, gavel. I don't, <laughs> Alex's wife is like, are you saying I don't have to order this? I can just go to Academy and pick a bottle up anytime I want? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Done. You can, yeah. Leslie. So I text him about it, and I think he has some other new stuff on the market too. So we need to probably pick up some of his stuff and try it. Yeah, yeah we'll get him back on. Yeah. Let's, get, let's get him back on, do, do our thing, right? We need to get Mo back on as well. We need to get a lot of people back on. We haven't had a guest on in a while, but I'm, I'm trying to get some lined up for us. Is it just is it you, John, or like what's happening? Is it me? Yes, it's me. I haven't done it, so it's not going to happen until I do. <laughs> we, we've been trying right. to work out the John video thing. aspect of this whole thing. So. Exactly. Actually, I wanted to make a little apology for the late. We've been late like two or three weeks in a row now, and it's because I've been getting my ass kicked by the editing portion of this. So, listeners, I'm sorry, but I think I have it figured out. So, hopefully next week it's on time. Uh, <laughs> well, it's my, fingers. Fault. it's my fault. Uh, because I did, I Monday, I actually sent my, my, my clip or my video to you late Monday, mm-hmm. and it didn't give you a lot of time. There it is. So did James. Oh, never mind. I was going to say <laughs> it's my fault because <laughs> I had a ham sandwich today for lunch. Usually I have turkey. That was the wrong way. Yeah. It's my fault. Yeah, it is your fault, James. Yeah. Okay. It Both your faults. Anyways, that's all I've got for the Hot Off the Road Barbecue awesome. News. Are you, are you saying that it's... Are you saying what I think you're saying, James? Yeah, I'm saying we need to slide into uh, a little bit of paying the bills. Did I you think this. I was going to say that? Oh, <laughs> no, I was, I was waiting for that <laughs> no. earlier. Uh, yeah. Later. Uh, later. Nope, Later. we're going to pay some bills. Earlier. We're going to hear from one of our friends hey, in the Odd Pods. Catholic. All my bills. Media Texas. Network. Catholic. Okay. Catholic. Catholic. In part by Oklahoma Joe's new Rider Deluxe Pellet Grills. Since the company's humble beginnings in 1987, Oklahoma Joe has helped those who appreciate the process and the craft of smoking. What began with Joe Davidson, a member of the Barbecue Hall of Fame, and a dozen hand-built smokers at the Oklahoma State Fair over 30 years ago has since forged an Oklahoma Joe's brand that builds some of the most sought-after smokers. 
Oklahoma Joe has a proud history of creating uncompromising smokers and grills with carefully crafted design. And the newest generation of the popular Ryder Series pellet grills carries on this tradition. The new features in the Oklahoma Joe's Ryder Deluxe pellet grills include a pit control 2.0 system that delivers the category's first dual sensor temperature control. Fire focused dual sensor feedback optimizes temperature control based on selected cooking styles low and slow smoking, or high heat grilling. A power feed system that boasts the high torque auger motor that powers through pellets for incredible power and performance. The new Ryder Deluxe series builds on several popular features, including smoke and sear modes, which features an impressive temperature range that runs from 200 degrees Fahrenheit to a searing hot 650 degrees Fahrenheit, and a 20-pound quick-draw hopper that allows unused pellets to be drained in seconds for simple storage, removal, and swapping of pellet flavors. Guys, if you want to find out more information about the new Ryder Deluxe Series pellet grills from Oklahoma Joe, check out the Oklahoma Joe's website, and the link is in our description in the bio, and that's oklahomajoes.com. Hey, you there. We've got a question for you. Are you tired of clickbait stories and the loudest voices driving discussions in culture and entertainment? If so, I'm Dylan. I'm Kendall. And I'm Corey. And we host the podcast From the Middle. We're middle class guys living in the middle of America, in the middle chapters of our lives with points of view somewhere in the middle. We take a more reasonable and centrist approach in our discussions covering genres like comedy, culture, entertainment, and interviews with really interesting folks like business owners, comic creators, doctors, news anchors, New York Times best-selling illustrators, professional stand-up comics, and more. We really value a relaxed and conversational podcast, one that we hope is so fun and laid back, you'll forget you're not actually hanging out with us. So search at From the Mid Pod, just like it sounds, or check us out everywhere you can find podcasts. That's probably my favorite podcast. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, well. it's it's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. The guys are entertaining. I love those guys. I yeah. think that was the most fun one being on. It was pretty all good. the things we've yeah. been on. So, yeah. 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 They were fun to talk to. Yeah. They, we, I feel like they were a lot like us. So it was very easy to, to have a conversation with them versus like 20 seconds. You're on the clock. Who's your best artist that you like? You're like, oh my god, like, dude, like, why are we asking me? <laughs> Just because you froze up. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Like, I already want to go back on that show. And which, by the way, we got to get back on that show. I got to do better. Right. I can't see what do I can do. Right. What was the show? What was it? Uh, which one? The barbecue. Uh, barbecue Nation. Yeah, Barbecue, barbecue Nation. Nation. Yeah, yeah. Poor Dan yeah. froze yeah. up back there. Oh, which I had music? a great time on that show. Houston rap. Uh, yeah, I love that. I listened to it, but that wasn't one of my favorite. I just froze. I couldn't even talk. Like, what happened was, to you that night? It was so funny because it's <laughs> such a weird format to go into. Like, I just no. It was you. You were off. There was something uh, wrong. It was with you so that bad. Night. You know what? You know what it is. <laughs> I'm great at asking questions. I'm not good. At being asked anything, mm. you know what I mean. So, yeah. Leanne, Jeff, yeah, yeah, I love they're, that they're, show. They're so good. I love. Oh them. my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Anywho, all right, this is the grabbing the brisket beer, beer review. Let's go. I'm excited about this one, James. Today is a uh, another beer brought to you by Martin House Brewery. It's always uh, Martin House, Can official we it? sponsor it of the show. Mm. Can we get? There'll be a official sponsor if they can start sending us some uh, beer. Can you get with Martin House? Tell them like, dude, are, when are you become the official official beer of the show? Like, we just keep reviewing your beers, and it's not because we want to; it's because you put out so many beers. When we go to the store, you're like, well, that's a new beer. I got to take that. Right. Next week, you're like, oh shit, that's a new beer. I got to take this. And, and, and you're like, <laughs> and oh, all, and you don't even realize it's by Martin House. You're like, oh, yeah. it's Martin House. They have the shit. best artwork on their cans. They, they do. It's they very catchy. catchy. It's very they catchy. do so. Hold it up in front well. of the, yeah. the thing there. Let's see. Yeah, here. Put right in that camera. Yeah. Anyways, so this is called what, James? This is called uh, Upside Down. Lactose sour with pineapples, cherries, and cake flavoring. 6.5% alcohol by volume. What do you think of that can, Jan? Malt beverage and natural and artificial flavors. This can speaks summertime. This can mm. is summer. You know what I mean? We do like it. I like the light blue. With the, it has got the yeah, little right. pineapples with the it cherries in the center. Yeah, this well, is yeah. how we do our bris- It's how we do our pork butts. It's a great looking can. Pineapple with some with some maraschino uh, 
cherries in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Layer the whole thing. Put your pork on top. Then you layer the entire top of it, and you just cook. I like it. It's it's delicious. You just cook. Then, then you blend everything up. You crush the cherries, crush the pineapple. Everything goes into the meat after you're done, and then nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty delicious. Can't wait for yeah. that video to come out. Right? We've shot it before, bro. So this is um, great. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's right. <laughs> Sorry you didn't get it. Don't rush <laughs> into these things. We've actually shot that thing already. <laughs> So so when I picked this yes. up, automatically I was like, yeah, a pineapple, pineapple upside down cake. I mean, oh, I'm a sucker for that. that that's uh, one of my favorite cakes yeah. in the world. And it's, I was like, and I, guy, I actually saw these guys doing a review. Uh, what, what's the guy that does the review on TikTok uh, mm-hmm. where he talks about all the beers? Not the Martin House guy. Correct. No. no. Uh, one Big Pike? Yeah. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. The big, yeah. Yeah. Why are you out? Big dude with the beard. If you don't even yeah, know. The beard. Yeah. yeah. Correct. I think that's say yes. I don't know. This yeah. guy on the internet. So, a lot of that, that's where I saw it, and he's like, uh, yeah, this is literally like if you like pineapple upside down cake, like you get the cake batter, you get the pineapple, the cherry, the the tartness, and this is a sour beer, so it's it, it's very sour. It so does have some sour. If you're a fan of the sour styles of beer, then this what's, is right What's up your the alcohol alley. in this? Six and a half. Six and a half. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, For it's, a sour, it's pretty I, good. I'm not, I've not tried it, but... I mean, it smells like you're smelling cake batter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? It, it's got a lot of complex flavors, I think. And the tartness, like you said, it's sour. I don't think it's over-the-top sour. No, I don't like, think some so of them are really sour. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, I can't do it. This, I think it's it's complemented pretty well by the sweetness. Well, that's ridiculous. Usually, I don't really go for sours, mm-hmm. but this is... Uh, I think it's good. It's got a very really good like balance, it. I think. Yeah. I like it a lot. Have you tried this one before, James? I have, yeah. So did you get it again because you're like, oh. No, no, it's still the same six-pack. So oh, okay. I, think I, just I had it? one out of it. Yeah. I think John had one mm-hmm. like maybe a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Yeah, it's been hanging on to it. Mm. We had a few different uh, packs in the fridge we've been working through each week. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, what do you think, Matt? You want to go first? Mm. I think they uh, very appropriately named this beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think they nailed all the pineapple pineapple upside down cake elements to it. And I'm going to give it an 8.4. Wow. You're up there. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. usually, I, sour beers and usually not that crazy about, but this Can is the same tasty. Same. Yeah, go for it. I'm an 8.8. Eight. Hey. This is Damn. a really good beer. This thing, you could, dude, you see me drink that? I could just drink oh, it. I could drink it all. I could have killed that whole thing. <laughs> Like easily, it's just a great beer. Eight I think eight, it's good too. Eight eight, it's just it's smooth. It's not too sour. It's just it finishes really well. You know what you're drinking. You're not getting, you're not drinking. You're not looking at a can and drinking something and going like, this does not represent what the can says it does. This thing represents exactly what it is. It's it's a little mm-hmm. it's a little cakey. It's definitely pineapple-y. It's it's it, it still has a watery taste to it. it where it's not overly pineapple, right? Mm-hmm. It's not it's not just like some artificial whatever. This is a great beer. Great beer. I like eight, it, eight. too. And I got a number in my head before you guys started talking. I'm glad I did because you guys would have definitely swayed me. Uh, I'm going to go 8-3. I really like this beer, too. It's really good. Nice. Yeah. And like you, everything you said, it's pineapple uh, The sweetness definitely cuts the sourness. I think it's it's very well-rounded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Love it. I'm a little bit lower than you guys. I'm going to solid 7.0. It's, it's a, a good, lot. It's a, it's a good You're beer. You're not a big sour person, right? I, I'm not no. a big sour person. But that's not so. like like you take a, take a drink. <laughs> Talk them out of it, Jim. Drink. Talk them out of it. Just take mm-hmm. a drink. I, if they just eliminate the sour and it was more sweeter, I would probably give it like a an eight point five. Like, like pineapple juice. Yeah, pineapple juice. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. call it pineapple Martin, juice. Martin House. Uh, you hear hear from the experts. <laughs> right. uh, make pineapple juice with alcohol, <laughs> right? Like just vodka like or whatever you got to do. Screwdriver, but yeah, right. Make it with pineapple. Right. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a my time. You're a seven zero. Seven zero. That's you, good. Are you sure you don't want to like reconsider what yep. this is? I'm good. No, so like seven, 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 seven zero. Seven zero is very good. That means it's a very seven good. Is good. Seven one. Nope. And <laughs> yes, it okay. cuts you off. Hey, <laughs> this concludes. This is what happens. This Grab is, them in the brisket. Beer review. Hey, this is what happens when you pull crazy shit like. Hey, this we sang the jingle. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> So, Moving on. Hey, there's no going back. It's time for barbecue. This may be one of the quickest 90 second beer reviews. I mean, not 90 second beer reviews we've had. Maybe we call yeah. it the not 90 second beer review. Right. The review formerly known as 90 seconds. <laughs> yeah. It's like Prince. Uh, I see John is wearing his 90 second beer review. Let's go. 
Don't tell him. <laughs> the original. The I have the shirt. I'm not going to not wear it. We got trademark infringed <laughs> on or something. What was that? They 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 sent us like a very nice people. Very, Go check out their Instagram. They sent us a letter. I'm not over this, man. <laughs> I'm still talking about like, dude. Then do like you two years? I feel, I feel like we were like I feel like we're sending them traffic. I, I feel like we're just like helping them out. Like, great, yeah. We we made 90 second beer review shirts. We we talk about it. Own it. Like I don't. When care. When you look it up online too, there's multiple people that post 90 second beer reviews at this yes. point. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Most of them are still us, but and it should be us. Like it's our idea. <laughs> it's not theirs. <laughs> yeah, but they they're got, they they're part parts. of the simulation. Right. We're not. You know what right. I mean? They're part of the matrix. We're actually alive. That's how I actually view a lot of people. I don't know why. It's right. weird. So anyway, it's weird. Yeah, James, please tell let's, me about let's the Let's pull it in <laughs> together. Like, maybe just tie it up a bit. Yeah. All right? We're, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to get into talking <laughs> about barbecue. I'm in my own simulation. Right. <laughs> Jan, Jan is in his own simulation. Yeah. So today is all about <laughs> cooking competition oh, pork shit. ribs. <laughs> yeah. uh, and just pork ribs in general. We, we can go into that as well. Uh, but the first portion of it is... is Ultimately, like the rib selection, it's like I'm going to the grocery store. I am looking to 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 get what I need to get as far as the rib. It, it, it probably varies, uh, maybe whatever competition that you're you're getting into, but a lot mm-hmm. of them are are specifically pork spare ribs. That's right. Yeah, you're not doing baby backs, whatever else. You're so doing you, a spare rib. You, you can get you, the giant spare ribs, or you, you can you get can, the uh, you, St. Louis cut, which is already kind of like yeah, we're trimmed, trimmed down. down. A little bit. You can buy them and cut your cut yours down the way you want them, right? And and, and buy the buy the big cut. But then it's always about like the product, right? It's where you're getting it from. Like and back in the day, we used to be like, oh, what store are you going to? Like that was the big deal. Like what store? Yeah, I go to Kroger's, or I go to Walmart, or I go to whatever, right? Uh, but now it's all about where these pigs are coming from, mm-hmm. right? Like so, people like the, the Duroc. Uh, I'm saying that correctly. I, I can't say Catholic, so I'm pretty sure I'm not saying right. that. Duroc, yeah, the Duroc uh, ribs, yeah. Right. So it, mm-hmm. that, that's like it's the style of pig or whatever else, right? Or, or the the breed of pig. Yeah, there's I like think, a ton of different breeds, and I think yeah. we're kind of limited on, on our end as far as being in Texas because. Uh, we have a lot of options of different, I guess, manufacturers that put out pork. Um, whether you're talking about Smithfield or you're talking about um, yeah, um, Swift or you're talking whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I think it's it, it's a little bit different in when you slide over to say maybe Georgia, Atlanta, Tennessee, all these southern states over here that are really predominant in that pork. Um, I would say production or that port game, so to speak, yeah, they have yeah. so many different options than what we have. Uh, and, and one thing I want to talk about is like just getting into is okay. The three styles that you're going to go to the grocery store, what you're going to see, you're going to see baby backs. Yep. You're going to see pork spare ribs yep. and you're going to see spare ribs or St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they, those are the same spare rib and a St. Louis rib are the same. It Correct. just, it's just cutting them down. You have to you have to know how to cut them down. Like, do you want to do the extra work? Right. And but for me, I always buy the full rack, and I'm like, ah, eh, you know, whatever. Well, unless I'm trying to go to competition. Do you ever cut always. yours down? Yeah. I I buy the spare rib, and I just cook it on there. I just like having that little extra meat knuckle at the end. So back in the day, I used to. Back in the day, that's how. Like, yeah, I didn't even like back in the day, like like twenty years ago. I don't think we even cut them down at that point. We just. They didn't offer like St. Louis style. You cut. just you just cut them. You basically like you got could, the you spare. Could cut and it you down cut it down yourself. You could cut mm-hmm. it down yourself or not. Back then, we just didn't really care. We're like, like it was almost like we a trash, it like a giant, like yeah, foot and a half eight, long rib, eight inch, <laughs> eight inch bone, nine inch like, bone in. You better give us a bigger box because. But, but it was <laughs> almost like a like nobody cared. Like we only entered the pork ribs because it was like. James did some research and he was like, ah, I'll cook ribs. I'm like, okay, fine. Like we just went into cook offs only cooking brisket. Mm-hmm. Like people cook brisket and chicken. We're like, okay, well good for y'all. Like we're only, we're going to spend 15 hours only concentrating on one protein. And we're going to make the best we can. And oftentimes we, we were in the top, right? The top, what, whatever that, what that would be, right? Top five or top three or top one. Right. Uh, that was us. But uh, when ribs came around, we're like, ah, it's trash. Like, who cares? And now I look at it, I'm like, man, 
Like you can live and die by the rib. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the winners from the losers. That's right. That way it does. That's right. Uh, can I go into a little bit of uh, sure can. spare ribs? So spare ribs are cut from the uh, belly of the pig and are uh, known for its rich flavor and tender meat. Uh, they are a meatier and what? Well, okay. Let me go back here a little bit. Uh, so they're, they're meatier and larger than a baby back rib and are really popular with the competition cooking scene. Yeah. Going back to the whole thing we were talking about, you buy the whole spare rib and you cut it down to what you want. You basically cutting it down to the St. Louis style. You're able to square it in and cut it to where you want. So, I mean, I can see how that's like hugely popular with the competition scene. Yeah. So even even taking like the ribs now, you can go buy St. Louis cut ribs, and sometimes I don't think they cut them correctly. Let's be honest with you. Um, but you start looking about what people are turning in right now. Like those first couple of bones, they're just people are cutting those off now in competitions. Your, your racks look oh, like for this. Sure. Yeah. They're, about, they're about ten inches, like a rectangle. Yeah. yeah. Basically, right. like like maybe ten bones. No, yeah. I, I would, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Eight or nine. Seven, eight, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what yeah. I think. And, and like, really, you're only turning in maybe the middle five or six. That's it. And they're doing like five five racks of this. Yeah. Like, the the, the the guys that are actually competing, they're not cooking two racks of ribs. They're cooking eight racks of ribs. And they're going to get the best eight racks of ribs they can. Like, these guys, they, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the way that we do it. Like, we, we go right. in almost very purist, right? Like, where we have, okay, we're going to cook two briskets. Uh, we're going to cook two racks of ribs, and we're going to cook two chickens, right? And there's nobody telling you, you can't do more on the rib or chicken side. We just don't ever do it, right? We just – we're like, ah. And I feel like like on the rib side, like even last year at the at the Austin Rodeo where we were at, where we didn't really do – we were like a no-show in ribs. They were great flavored. They just weren't done just enough, hit, right? right? Yeah, it just wasn't it wasn't it, right? Uh even there, I think, I think that I think we could have done, I think we could have done a lot better had we just cooked multiple racks, uh, and just picked, picked the ones out. I forget know? were those tagged though. We might have been no. stuck. No. No. no, just the brisket Not was tagged. Just the brisket. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Next on the list is uh, baby back ribs. So, a little description that I got was like baby back ribs are cut from the loin, and they are are leaner. I guess they're leaner than the spare rib. Uh, they're also smaller in size. They have a more delicate flavor, and a they're uh, also known for its more tender meat. So, uh, baby back ribs, you always see them. They always got like that curved bone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Meat is just super tender and super, super juicy. So, if you get an opportunity to do a competition and they say, yeah, you can cook baby backs, you can cook whatever, yeah, go for baby backs 100%. You get a nice rack of just baby backs, and it's super tender. Uh, you'll win every day over a spare rib, uh, as long as you don't overcook it. It's weird because I feel like the spare rib just has so much more meat. You're like, it does. Have are you hungry, hungry or, or not? Fattier, right? Like, yeah. are you hungry or not hungry? You know, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean. I, and do you guys ever cook baby backs? Because like, if somebody invites me over and they say, "Hey, I'm cooking ribs." I don't expect to see baby backs when I no. show up. No, you know what I, I mean mm-hmm. like I do cook baby back. Yeah, baby back at the rib. I mean, baby at, at the house. <laughs> I can't talk. I'm a baby back. Right? Baby, 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 I baby. want my <laughs> chilies, baby back ribs, <laughs> barbecue. Uh, listen, I do cook those, but I love them every single day. I, I, I love them. They're, they're yeah. so freaking good. Every so often, I'll grab them because it'll be like a good deal. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll throw some of those down. You know, nine dollars. Yeah, You're like. <laughs> Uh yes please you know what I mean it's yeah. just yeah it, it's because they're it, hard to they, mess up they are so tender and you can just go on with just a dry rub and just on a grill or you can smoke them or whatever that's my favorite but they're so tender dude easily you can probably demolish like a half a rack by yourself because mm-hmm. there's not a whole lot of meat on it but there is nice tender meat on it so yeah. you can eat a whole rack of that just like well uh, okay well I'm I feel guilty now but. uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah I don't buy, know. Let's buy some this, this weekend and make our own uh, make rib sandwich out of them. Okay. Let's do it. Just cook yeah. it so much you pull the bone out. Anyway, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I like to do this on the grill and not wrap them. Just let them so, go. Yeah. yeah. So that's my yeah. favorite. I like grilled baby backs. I don't. I don't want a soft like it's been wrapped up in foil or wrapped up in paper. I I, I want one that's been grilled off, 
and you're basically you just break apart or cut, and it's right. tender. I think they're just too tender. You just have too, a, too little. You just meat have that, that grilled. Right. Yeah, but you have that grilled. It's like that salt pepper steak, yeah. just umami, Dude. just like boom. So let's good. go. So good. Mm. That's my All right. favorite. Next on the well, next on the list was St. Louis ribs. We already kind of like touched that a little bit. I mean, that's basically just a spare rib, just right. cut down. You're just it's cutting a, off those rib tips, basically. Yeah, just the knuckles, right? All just that, the, all the cartilage the pieces part. are going bye bye, right? And then I think a pro move that people do is uh, so you always have one fatter side to the spare rib, right? And you, it, it kind of tapers down. Mm-hmm. So people go in about two or three bones, they cut off, and then you're left with this this rack. It's about like I don't know eight bones or seven bones whatever, and they're going to cook about five of those, right? And mm-hmm. then that's how they get – that's how you get the best of the best. Mm-hmm. All five will be identical, but they're all going to cook differently. All meat cooks differently. Yeah. And, that, and that's how well, they – I think one thing you need, to, you need to watch out about is, uh, is those end bones are trash. Yeah. Right. Th- th- those are thrown away. So uh, what you're talking about as far as like you can't go f- – that far down into a rack of ribs because you're auto- automatically going to lose like yeah, you're turning those new ones the into the other ones. You're turning so two here, two here. That's going to turn into yeah. Okay, you're only going to have like maybe right six, eight bones, maybe right that's mm-hmm. usable. Yeah, that but, you can but, sit there but, and cut. but out of that rack, you're not turning all of those in. Right out of that rack, you're only, you're only going to turn about three or four, and then you're going to turn around and go to your next rack. Because you cook two, at least, minimum, and you're going to go cut those down. You're going to go, okay, you're going to pick four of those. So, like, you have eight ribs turning, nine ribs right. turning in, and you're going to you're gonna plate your box that way. You're not – nobody's taking all the ribs from one rack of ribs. No, no, no. And I think people think that, though. And I, I think people think, like, man, I they, these were good, but th- this middle part was great, but this the end parts weren't. You know, like they were just overdone or they were – too chewy or whatever the case may be. Right. But I don't think people realize, hey, why don't you go cook five racks of ribs and get the best of the well, best out of those five racks and turn mm-hmm. them in? Because mm-hmm. I guarantee you people are freaking doing this. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yes and no. They are. I, I think they're cooking, cheaters. Cooking five, I think <laughs> cooking kidding. five I'm racks of ribs yeah. is yes. probably overkill. I, I do. Three. I see people doing four. Right. But I think you, once you get down a so process five is too that much. you're, you're – you're At lining four, out. You're, oh, you're good. I don't think At you have four, to four, you're anymore. like, hey, it's perfect amount. I'm cooking five. You're like, I think you're being a little wasteful at that point. Like, no, I think I think we need to, to get like Aaron. Uh, we need to get Aaron Leslie or we need to get Bill Purvis on here talking about how many up. racks of ribs that they put on. Because I, I, I guarantee you they probably do maybe do two. That's it. Call them up. Bill. Bill, what are you cooking with? How many racks of ribs are you using like for your competition? Are you doing three racks, four racks, but five racks? Before we get way into He's listening. Yeah. Before we get way into the actual cooking in in and whatever, this is kind of more just uh the selection of the no, ribs. No, I know that. I get that. And one one of the big key takeaways that I can that I can say, and so there's there's three little things I was gonna say, but one of them before we get into it. Flip it over to the back side. Look at the bones. Look and see how they're how they're uh, moving. You want very straight bones. If you have a lot of bones that are just like sitting there curving, slanted, slanted, do not get that rack of ribs because you know what? I guarantee you, when you go to cook that rack of ribs and you pull it off and it looks beautiful, you're like, oh my god, this is amazing. And you go to fucking slice it on it, you're gonna just like slicing into like, bones. Looks like that. And you're gonna like, hate yourself like, and you're gonna be yelling at people. Yeah. And you're like, I keep slicing to the fucking bone and I keep doing it. It's yeah. nothing's nothing's like, even if you can get it straight, they're all gonna be all funky on the it's, ends, right? It's all, all angle. gonna shrink up. Right. The meat's gonna you're shrink like, up, everything gonna... shrinks up. That's why it makes it harder. In the beginning right. you're like, Oh, I can cut that. And then when it cooks up, you're like, Ugh, bone, bone, bone. All right, so once bone. you decide which which cut of ribs you're gonna do, what what's your next Next step in the process of selecting ribs. You looking what? at marbling thickness? What are you looking so, at? Is it brand? Do you, do you look? Are you trying to order? Are you trying to order ribs in? Are you trying to figure out what people are doing? I, in I other think states? we're we're looking at brand. Like when yeah. you go to the store, like it's like you're not going into trying to find uh, whatever the cheapest doing Smithville manufacturer or producer How out do there. You know though. Prairie Fresh is a huge one. A lot of Prairie Fresh you guys is, use a, that. is a good one that a lot uh, of people go in there. Smithfield Extra Tender. I love those. What's I the high rate Tyson one? 
I forget that what one called. Yeah, you know what I'm Tyson, talking about? Yeah. Tyson yeah. makes like a higher grade yeah. one. And, and a maybe lot of there's like a yeah. yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what it's called. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. So yeah, yes. Look for those those styles of meat uh, that that are like the 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 premium, yeah. uh, the H E B like all natural, uh, premium type ribs that they put out there. I kind of like those. I'm Super like, awesome. Mm. I cook those uh, all the time. And, and it goes back to like like John was saying. It's like okay, so you're looking for marbling. You're looking for like, uh, and when I say marbling, you're looking for like the meat to fat ratio, and then also you're looking for a, kind of a thickness of the meat mm-hmm. because you don't want something super thin because it's it's just gonna dry out it's gonna dry out it's gonna overcook so you want something pretty meaty you don't want to be pulling off the bone too much you got bone showing now correct yeah so and you want to look for the it's like we talked about the 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 fat striations you want it to be nice and marbled you want it to be nice and and thick even going across um i would stick personally if i'm doing competition i'm sticking with just I'll probably buy just the the St. Louis style cut already. I won't go in and try to buy a spare rib and try to whatever. I think you kind of lose a little bit when you go to spare rib because those guys are just cut so thin. So mm-hmm. sometimes you get like two to a pack or you get like just one spare rib and it's very thin. You're like you're just like, oh, okay, these these look good, but um like the ones we did is like like past weekend, I think there was two to a pack. Mm-hmm. They looked good, marbling wise. They, I think it was Smithfield. They they mm-hmm. looked beautiful, but you bust them out of the pack, and I mean, I'm talking like straight up, just super thin, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. it kind of tapers up to a little bit bigger end. But how was that rib? The ones we had this past weekend? Yeah, uh, amazing. Did you cook that other rack? It's frozen. Okay. Hey, well, yeah, the, the ones we did at the house were fantastic. What did we they use were on good. that? They were really good. Uh, the seasoning was. Uh, I th- I seasoned this actually, so yeah. I should know this. You should know this. <laughs> was it chicks that smoke? I did chicks that smoke. What else? I did like three, two, two or three rubs. Oh yeah, we did. Um, was it the Heath Riles peach? That's right. He- Heath Riles peach, and then we did another rub. Something uh, else. Yep. Um, was that another Heath Riles rub? No, it's somebody else's that sent us. Somebody sent us. Oh, it was uh, Blazing Star. Blazing Star. Yeah, the Reaper Rub. Yeah, we didn't use Chicks of Smoke on that. We used Blazing Star Reaper yeah, no, Rub. Yeah, I, did. I oh, you did? did. Yeah, I popped a little Chicks of Smoke. Okay. Uh, but but uh, the Reaper Rub was... That's good. It's good. It, it was spicy Spice Rub was good. It's mm-hmm. spicy. It's got a nice little kick to it. It's just back end, right? And it finishes really fast. But that sauce. The sauce, so dude. Teeth uh yeah, yeah, that vinegar sauce. That vinegar yeah. and... Uh, Tangy vinegar. Tangy vinegar, yeah. Dude, that just kind of hit. I liked it. A we were both ribs. like, I don't know about this, yeah. and then oh, I thought it was great. It, it wasn't yeah. overly sweet. Very versatile. It did, it definitely sauce. had a sweetness, right? Yeah. And we, when we wrapped, we put a little honey. We put we put the sweetness in there, a little brown sugar or whatever else. But when you hit with that sauce and it set up, and when I felt smell, I was like, mm, I don't know. That's good. Yeah. Right. It ended up being like a yeah, like yeah, a more yeah. delicate kind of uh, vinegar. Like it wasn't real heavy or anything like that. Yeah, it, it was, was good. It was kind of heavy on the, on the front end. But I mean, after it's set and everything. No, perfect. Yeah. No, yeah, nothing. Okay, cool. It was just phenomenal. Hmm. Well, it wasn't the best ribs I've ever done in my life, right? Or the best ribs I've ever, I ever had in my Very life. Very versatile ribs, I think. Everybody would like them. But I think it was a rib for everyone. I, mm-hmm. I totally agree. I think you're not going to kick it out of bed. I think it was a good <laughs> rib. Get out of my bed, ribs. Yeah, get out of my bed. <laughs> you're making a mess. Right. I'm going to eat you in a minute. Leaving your sauce everywhere. <laughs> you got to go. It's not uh, you. It's me. That's fantastic. Okay, so... Kind of just like wrapping it up, just right. I'm I'm trying to process and think. So obviously, in the beginning of the, the the biggest key takeaway when you're selecting your ribs for competition and for the house it, it itself, like you want to look for something that's really nice and marbled. Mm-hmm. Yep, I guess number one. But you don't want it like super, just like fatty. Like you know what no. I mean? All white. You want a Correct. you want a thick rib. Right, you want to evenly rib, even thick from one end to the other end. What you're looking for, and if, at the very end, doesn't right. the spine at least in off. the middle bones. Right. right, middle bones. Look for straightness. Straight mm-hmm. bones. Straight bones. Um, and yep. then look for an all natural product if you can get That's it. Right. right. That's right. Except then that wasn't obviously previously frozen. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, just like not having. Like you want something raised. You want to make sure the, the the pigs are being raised natural. Yeah, not, you want to. Yeah, you don't you want to eat. You happy don't want pigs. a bunch of hormones. You don't want a bunch of antibiotics or whatever else. You want 
happy pigs is what you want. Right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the next good. next couple episodes, as, as we get into it, I know we'll get kind of squirrely, and we'll we'll talk about some other stuff, whatever. But we'll we'll dive into the we'll the delve, actual we'll delve cooking process, mm-hmm. and also some of the seasonings and stuff that we use, and the processes that we use as far as the injecting, the brining, whatever it is. Yeah. And I'll tell you, anybody out there listening that's like doing competition ribs itself, it's like if you're not. Brining your ribs. If you're not not injecting your ribs. Injecting your ribs. You're going to be losing um, more times than winning. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking about competition ribs, but honestly, if you're just doing backyard, you you should be picking up some tips from this too, right? That's right. So so, uh, we're going to get into cutting ribs and how to frame a rib. And I think it's very important. People don't, sometimes they think they just have to cut and turn in. And like, how to frame a rib. You, You might lose a couple of bones by doing this. Or, or lose part of your rack, but we're going to go into how to frame these things and how to get the most out of every rack. It's coming here, grabbing a brisket. You lead that episode. Yeah, definitely yeah. Mm-hmm. do that. So I'm I telling you, it. it's we have a whole lot. Like you think brisket was long? <laughs> Wait till you get to ribs. <laughs> I don't think ribs will be as long as brisket. <laughs> Join us next week when we talk about how the Civil War was won <laughs> off of uh, the import of pork and. <laughs> The how to, uh, how to <laughs> count each rib bone? Yeah, yeah. I, di- I did. I was doing a lot of research last night, talking about just trying to come up with like different topics and stuff like that. And one of them that I that I came across was like the importance of the uh, the pork industry and how it like correlated with the Civil War and, and a lot of uh, stuff that was going you gotta on. Feed people, man. The, the colonization of people moving from the the colonies from the coast area to you know, uh, branching out and pork was a uh, very huge in the, um, would you say catalyst of, because it was something that, that could transport well and That's it right. fed and you were able to, to do, and it had a lot of byproducts that you can utilize as well uh, with the, the lard, <laughs> the best, the fat and greasing uh, up all the wheels and shit like that. So that's it. Eh, that's another podcast for another day. Yeah. So we should yeah. probably go ahead and put together a competition rib, or at least a, a rib video start to, to finish. Mm-hmm. I know I put one out not that long ago, the spare ribs with the rib tips, and that's actually a pretty good video. Go check that out. Uh, but we should do a competition rib video for our YouTube. Right. Let's see I think. Yeah. Cool. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And that includes the barbecue portion of the podcast. So uh, if you're just tuned in strictly for Barbecue that. portion. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need a jingle for everything. Do we oh. think, uh, <laughs> do we any barbecue fells? We do. We have barbecue fails. Are you ready for that? Coming Let's up now? Go, Let's do it. man. What do you got? Up next on the Grabbing a Biscuit podcast. Grab the biscuit. <laughs> barbecue fails. It's very Catholic. Yes. <laughs> All it right. It seems to be the new, the new like sound now. Right. Yeah. I have a couple of them here. This is uh, this is one we got called in. I actually just got this one in today. And I'm going to play it for you. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, there is a little video to go along with it. But uh, yeah, listen up. Hey y'all, what's going on? This is Mike with That Dude Barbecue. My barbecue failed. Well, I was doing an overnight brisket about two weeks ago. I wake up and I go check the temperature of my brisket. This brisket says it's 100 degrees. I'm like, what the hell? Why my brisket 100 degrees? I go out. Cooked it all night. And I panic. And with the pan, it says it's 215 degrees. I go back and check. I'm like, why is the thing saying it's 100 degrees? Man, y'all, this brisket says 100 degrees Celsius. I don't know how the hell <laughs> I set my brisket or my my uh, day to Celsius. Sucks. But in my drunken demeanor, thank you, TX Whiskey and Lone Star <laughs> Beer. Let's. What's this guy's I name? Drunkenly said it to Celsius. I don't even know how the hell I did it, but I did it. Uh, but yeah, it, my brisket was 212 degrees. And I don't know how long it was set for that Man, long. Man, he boiled it. But, uh, but if it was on yeah. Celsius, I'd still so be cooking that motherfucker. Was harder than, or was harder than concrete. <laughs> and uh, I'll send y'all the video Let's for how this thing was. It I was love this. God awful. Yeah. Hey, God you, help me. <laughs> God hey, help 
I can God, say that God bark, will bark help look you. killer. Yeah. Hey, the bark looks right. money. Right. When he uh, sat down, I'm like, hey, it looks pretty good. And he's like sawing her. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have to watch this what, video. What's, and what's what's the only name? thing better than him sawing through this thing is him fighting with him with his tripod throughout the video. You keep seeing him all over. Yeah. I was cracking <laughs> cracking up. What's this, this thing? Name? This is Mike. Mike. Uh, and he is Michael. with uh at that dude BBQ on Twitter, so go check him out. That dude be nice. that dude barbecue. Love that. Mike. You just won yourself some sucker busters, sucker busters. Everybody wants some sucker busters, dude. <laughs> way to go, man! He's, hey, he's just sawing on this thing. Yeah, if you're not watching, he's just, this, just churning on it. Like it's like sawdust. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like 100 degrees. And it, when he when, I, when you see the brisket, you're like, uh, that's not 100 degrees. It looked good. I was like, this looks, looks good. Yeah, looks I, I've yeah. totally done that too, though. By the way, like Celsius? I had my my pen was accidentally on Celsius, and I'm probing I'm like. The hell, man! This, this is not right. It's like this chicken is taking forever. Like it does not look like it's that. And I'm like, oh yeah, like after I just burn the hell out of it. Damn. Yeah, but you could tell because he only cut. Well, cut. He only sawed like three or four slices, and then he, you could tell he's just like, fuck this shit, and turn the camera <laughs> yeah. off. And like, chop, yeah, chop beef, something. I was really uh, hoping for like uh, like an office like space moment where him just punching just, it in like, the field. start just like <laughs> just take it out to a field and start punching it. Just like mm, mm, <laughs> stop on it, right? Uh, it's I a got TikTok idea, James. One more here, and this is um, this wasn't even really sent to us as much as this video was sent to me, and I saw it posted on Facebook. But it's kind of barbecue related because there's a cow in the video, uh, and this is actually my brother. So if I have a chance to embarrass my brother. I have Justin. To, yeah, okay. This is Justin. fantastic. Let's go he Justin. does have a uh, um, a ranch or a uh, he has cattle. He's got a whatever. Farm. Yeah, He's got a farm. He's a big guy. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> he fell in the cow shit. <laughs> Justin, replay that again, real quick. One more time. One more time for the Just fans so at home. See it. Sorry, Justin. Yeah, he's a big guy, with the ball guy with the giant beard. Yeah, Looks like uh, Duck Dynasty over here. Let's just go. Hey. Oh, yeah, he's rolled right uh, into it. Oh, it's oh, oh. <laughs> He's got stinky poo all over him. Uh, the cows are... Hey, suckabuster, suckabusters. Everybody wants some suckabusters. Yeah, Justin, we'll send you Justin, some chicks that smoke. <laughs> you getting some chicks that smoke, brother. We got you one. Uh, but he has had a couple of his cows already butchered, so he's got a freezer full of meat. I'm going to go out there and cook that something. one right now. Right, <laughs> right that then, video. you're done. It's like, yeah. we're, we're eating veal tonight. Yeah, who wants veal? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. That's I couldn't funny. help it. I had, to, I had to share that with you guys. I was just freaking dying. That's hilarious. Yeah. Ah, Justin. Hey, uh, <laughs> I know the soil is probably pretty loose that, that contributed to you uh, losing your balance. Uh, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> it's not John. your fault. It's not your um, fault, Justin. <laughs> what's the calf's name? Hey, what's the calf's name? Uh, you ground name? beef. Right? Yeah, right. Did y'all name him or did y'all already, did y'all already eat <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, they call him dinner. <laughs> yeah. All right. Man. Mm. Guys, this has been another awesome episode of Grabbing the Brisket. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy getting together with you guys and just talking barbecue with you guys. Tune in. Absolutely. Tune in, stick out, and smoke on. Smoke on. (laughs) We appreciate you. Thanks, everybody. We've been great. Dang it, Bobby. Just grab the brisket. We'd like to give a special thanks to Suckle Buster's Barbecue Rubs and Sauces. Bonner's Fiesta Spices, Cooley Nation Custom Koozies, Cambro Manufacturing, Yeti Coolers, The Smoke Sheet Barbecue Newsletter, and Dow Strong Knives. We definitely appreciate your support.